about that time, y'all. Yes, back to the laughs. That's what I'm here for. Welcome back to Eddie B TV. I am, of course, Eddie B. Nice to see y'all. And we are back at you again today for another reaction video. And uh, today, we're gonna get into some more Josh Wolf today. Yes, that's what we're doing. Well, um, I've only done a couple videos with this guy, you know? Um, I think he's hella funny. You know what I mean? Like, that's just a given right there. And uh, I don't know exactly what um, uh, what his entire body of work is. I'll have to get to that one day. But uh, yeah, man, you definitely had me laughing the uh, two videos I've seen of him so far. So yeah, we're gonna get into one from Josh Wolf today. And this one is going to be titled, Best Practical Joke Uncensored. That's what it says. Well, um, I already did, my first reaction to Josh Wolf was to the best practical joke. Um, but this one, the, the timing on it is a little bit longer, so that's what I'm guessing the uncensored part means. But yeah, man, um, maybe there's like more to the story, or maybe something else was taken out. I don't know what the deal is with this, but yeah, we're going to get into it today. And uh, this one was suggested to me by one of my very loyal subscribers. Haven't done any shout outs in a while, but I'm going to go ahead and get into one today. Patrick Anderson, thank you so much, my man, for uh, suggesting this one to me. Uh, Josh Wolf, man, he's got a um, he's got a different kind of energy on stage, you know. It's very comfortable up there. Uh, it's almost like you know, it's almost like a warm up to him every time that I've seen him on stage. It's only been a few videos or whatever, but uh, yeah, man, I appreciate you um, suggesting this clip to me, and we're gonna get into it. Like I said, so uh, Josh Wolf with the best practical joke uncensored version of this one. And if you like this reaction, please put them on the like button for me one time. Uh, subscribe to the channel, ring that bell, and of course, as always, leave a nice comment for your boy. Uh, constructive critiques, uh, leave a nice suggestion or request, and uh, throw a couple uh, zingers at your boy. Friendly dialogue, no drama here, and that's how we're going to keep it. And uh, yeah, man, that's just what it is here on Eddie BTV, you know? I'm trying to have fun here. That's what I'm all about. Hopefully, you guys are the same. So yeah, man, uh, only a couple videos of Josh Wolf down and... Um, this one's a little bit longer. It says, uh, let me see, because I don't usually look at times when I start it. Uh, 21 minutes and 17 seconds, so we're going to be here for a little bit. But uh, yeah, hopefully it's going to be a fun one. Let's do it. Josh Wolf with Best Practical Joke Uncensored right here on Eddie BTV. Patrick Anderson, thank you one more time for the request. Let's get into this. All right, let's get situated with this one, and here we go. My buddy asked me to throw him a bachelor party, right? And so, um, so there's a bunch of this um, that that if you haven't seen it live, you haven't seen most of uh, the worst things that happened to my friend. Okay, okay. So he asked me to throw him a bachelor party. I said no. And I said no because I know me. And I know that if you ask me to do something seriously for you, I'm not gonna. Like, as soon as he asked me, I was like, well, I'm gonna fuck you. I'm gonna fuck him up. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do something terrible to him, you know? And he's, I said, you don't want me to do this, dude. You just don't want me to. I'm gonna fuck up your day. And he goes, nah, man, you've been to Vegas more than any of us. Just plan the party and get the girl. And I said, all right. So I, I did get him a girl for the end of the party. And one thing, by the way, that nobody I haven't ta talked about is I did get him a girl. There was a girl in the hotel room waiting for him for the end. But when I told him, I go, you got to go in that other room. He didn't trust me to go because I had just unleashed the fury on him. You know what I mean? So, so um, the lap dance went to somebody else. Uh, uh, I was like, oh, I can't let it go to waste. I mean, shit, you know? Yeah. So I said, all right, I'll get you the girl, man. But I wanted something that entertained me at the top of the store, at the top of the party. And what entertains me is weird shit, guys. I like weird, I like weird shit. Weird shit makes me laugh. Where did I think I could find something weird for him? I went on Craigslist in Vegas. And I was just looking through it. And, oh, there's so many good, weird things on Craigslist. I'm scrolling through, I'm scrolling through. That's real. And I pass all the sex stuff, and I land on the weird. And the weird was three words and her phone number. And the advertisement just said, I'll wrestle you. And I was like, fuck yeah, you will. Yeah, I remember that. That at least deserves a phone call, you know? So <laughs> I call her on the phone. Now on the phone, 
She told me she was six foot two fifty on the phone. And um, she told me that her skill set is she comes to your house, she gets naked, and she beats the shit out of you for a little while. <laughs> Yeah, I was like, well, what time can you get here? <laughs> and so, she, and she asked me, by the way, she did ask me, she goes, do you want me to send you a picture? I go, well, you've painted a pretty good picture. I know who's coming over. <laughs> I, I, you don't need to validate yourself. All you said is six foot 250, and after that, it was like, wah, 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 right? <laughs> now, so she shows up at the hotel, and I'm the only one there. Now, here's the first thing my friend never wanted me to tell you. Ready for this? Uh -oh. First thing he ever wanted me to tell you is when I opened the door, six foot was real. 250. <laughs> Not real. Was she? she was deep into the threes. Oh. Deep, oh. deep, deep into the threes. And I asked her, I go, hey, how come you didn't tell me you were over 250 pounds? And she said, well, I didn't want to scare you away. <laughs> And I told her, I go, hey, just so you know, for the future of your business, anybody who's calling about 250 isn't scared of 300. <laughs> <laughs> you, could, you could charge me extra is all I'm saying. But, I mean, you should be charging by the pound, but I'm not your man. So. <laughs> and so she was holding a foot-long sub oh. and 24 buffalo wings. Oh, man. She just waved them at me. And she goes, you got a room where I could go fuel up before the match? And I was like, first of all, fuck yes, I do. And right in there, actually. I said, second of all, you should know that the person you're wrestling oh. today doesn't know there's going to be a match. Yep, yep. I don't know if that changes your professional approach at all, but I thought you should know, right? So she goes off into her room to eat, I'm assuming. And uh, my buddy comes over, and he's sitting down on a stool, and I got him blindfolded. And here are a couple other things that he never wanted me to tell you. He's the squarest square I've ever met in my life. He's marrying his high school sweetheart. Aww. He's never seen another woman naked before. <laughs> Guys, do you understand? <sighs> this is only the second naked body he will ever have seen in his life. Oh, it's gonna fuck him up. I, I can't wait, you know what I mean? He sent me a text two weeks before the party that just said, do all boobs feel the same? And I was like, oh my God. I can't wait for this fucking party! <laughs> Damn. No, they don't, And he by told the me way. he was ready, and I said, cool, and I call her out. Now, none of my other friends knew what I had planned. So when she walked out of that room naked, collectively, they were like, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> and as she got closer, oh. I could see that she still had buffalo wings on, so <laughs> I was gotta get her a napkin, but I was like, man, your face is so funny! <laughs> so my buddy is sitting there, and here's the thing. He's not a big dude. He's 5'8", 140, if he's wearing a lot of fucking clothes. Like, he's a tiny dude, man. And he was, but he was so excited there was a naked woman sitting in front of him. His hands were shaking. And he was like, oh, 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 oh. <laughs> I'm so excited. And I was like, huh. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> Hey guys, I just sit back and I was looking at him for a second. Both of them. My buddy, 5'8", 140, blindfolded, trembling like a leaf on a stool, standing in front of him, naked, six foot, deep into the threes. <laughs> deep into the threes. And I'm just looking at the two of them and I'm thinking to myself, this was a good purchase. <laughs> ah. Zero buyer's remorse on this purchase. Like, I am already 100%. I have three kids. This is already the best night of my fucking life. Like, <laughs> but I've known this dude forever, man. So I lean into him. I go, man, I just want to make sure we're cool. Uh, I know you're married to your high school sweetheart and your life partner, but you've got a naked woman standing in front of you. Do you want me to send her home? And he got serious. And he goes, you better not. <laughs> and I said, well... Just remember you said that, and let's get started, you know? Yeah. And I take off his blindfold. Uh. And the only word he could get out of his mouth before she ripped him out of his chair was, why? Uh, like that, right? He did say that. I was trying to remember. 
She yanked him up in the air and his little feet were dangling in the air. She started tossing him around the like, room like a rag doll and I was like, that's what I'm fucking talking about. <laughs> she would jump on top of him and he had to push her fat out of his face to talk to us. He was like, tell him to stop. How long is she gonna be here? Oh. I can't breathe. <laughs> Why does she smell like buffalo wing sauce? Right? <laughs> At one point in time, she had her knees on his elbows, pinning them down to the ground, and she was just beating him in the face with her titties, just... <laughs> <laughs> and these aren't five foot two, 110 pound, bing, bing titties. This is six foot. Deep into the threes. Just... That's how big her titties were. They made that noise through the air. Just. <laughs> it was like being hit with a tit missile. Just. <laughs> oh. <laughs> it sound... You know what it sounded like? It sounded like if you closed your eyes, it sounded like a titty pterodactyl. Just. When he get hit by a punch and his whole face would go, oh. <laughs> One titty was like, gah, gah, gah. Right? <laughs> so, look, if oh, you've seen man. the video online, you it cuts right now to me talking about him, her standing here and him standing here mad. So what he never let me tell you is why he was so mad. So I will tell you. So she stands up to take a rest. He's on his knees. Here's a couple things you need to know that have been happening all night that he obviously never wanted me to tell you. First of all, she's been undressing him the whole night. Oh. So at this point of the night, he's wearing boxers, one sock. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's been a rough night for my man. You know what I mean? It's not been a good time for him, you know? One sock. So here's another thing. Uh. By the way, you have to know how much I loved this woman. We all went out and got fucked up after the party. She was amazing. Guys, let me tell you how much of a gangster this woman was. One of my buddies got so drunk he couldn't walk out of the bar. She picked him up over the shoulder. <laughs> Firemen carried him out of the fucking bar. And let me tell you why she was so good. You know how you're kind of bouncy when you're getting firemen carried, right? He's bouncing, bouncing. And at one point he just looks up and she goes, he, he just looks up and goes, I think she just farted in my face, right? <laughs> Ugh. She didn't miss a beat, and she just goes, that's right, bitch. Like that, just walk. I was like, I love this woman, you know? But so, the other no. thing I really liked about her is that she was really passionate about her job. I like people who like what they do. And she mm -hmm. paid attention to detail. How did I know that? So her one sock, leaving that on, was important to her. That was attention to detail. That was her way of telling him, hey, you don't get to decide shit tonight. Oh. Because he hated that one sock. He hated it because he could never get his footing. He always slipped when he tried to brace himself, right? <laughs> so he hated it, so he kept taking it off and throwing it across the room. But every time he did, she would walk over and pick it up, sit on his chest, oh. and put that motherfucker back on him. Oh, damn. <laughs> like a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> she did, there was a little tear that came to my eye. I'm like, I love you so much! <laughs> Guys, he was head to toe sweat. She had been beating the shit out of him for 20 or 25 minutes, and I know a lot of people think that's hyperbole when I say it. It is not. She was noticeably bigger. More than twice his size. She was legitimately way stronger than him. And here's how you can tell someone is stronger than another human being. Because there were parts of the night, and this still makes me laugh when I think about it. There were parts of the night where she would... Uh-oh. <laughs> the visual is great. Where she would just grab him by the shoulders, and this is how you could tell she was stronger than him. She would just grab him by the shoulders and just fucking shake him. <laughs> and his whole body just... You, you know... <laughs> Major. You know what he looked like? He looked like, you know, you know those uh, uh, wind socks out in front of a tire store? That he... <laughs> it looked like he didn't have any bones in his little body. She was just fucking him up, you know what I mean? 
I was like, oh, she's going to rearrange his organs. Like, he's in trouble, you know? Oh. He was breathing like this. Because <sighs> every time she got him on the ground, she would smother him with her gigantic boobs. And I guess he couldn't breathe. Because when she moved his, her boobs, his head would pop up like this. <sighs> Like he'd been underwater for 20 minutes, just, ah! right? Damn, man. So she's standing here, she just uh. fucked him up, and he goes to crawl off the floor. He didn't get up and walk, this dude has no energy for that. He's crawling off the floor. And she's standing on the other side of the room, um, and she gave him uh, what I like to call five feet of hope. Because he really thought he was about to get away, you know what I mean? And she just took like two giant strides, <laughs> grabbed him by the ankle, looked at all of us, and just went. <laughs> she was so much stronger than him, both of his legs <laughs> popped up in the air, right? Bam, he landed on the ground, and she starts to slowly drag him back to the middle of the room. Guys, he doesn't want any part of the middle. The middle of the room is where the bad shit happens, you know what I mean? This, that is his sunken space. My man does no. not want any part of the middle of the room. You know what I mean? And he's grabbing at things, but she just keeps yanking him along. And by the way, when she was dragging him slowly like a caveman, she was eyeballing all of us. Yo, I was like, I'm kind of hard right now. <laughs> Shut up, man. I'm scared and aroused at the same time. I don't know what's happening to me. She brings him back to the middle of the room. Oh, and man. here's... You'll know why he never wanted me to tell the story. She brings him back in the middle of the room. She picks him up by the ankle with this hand. And with this hand, boink, checks the oil. Finger in the asshole, right? <laughs> A finger that we found out later still had buffalo wing sauce on it. Wow. Yeah, that's why he was so mad. It makes a lot more sense now, right? Yo, Hell my no. man snapped. He was just sitting there, and you know when you've seen your buddy snap, he, they just go dead face? He was just like... <sighs> and he just looks at her and he goes, I'm gonna fuck you up. <laughs> she wasn't even nervous. She wasn't scared. She had just been beating this little dude up for almost a half an hour, you know what I mean? She just had digitally raped him. She's got no problems with this dude, you know? And he makes the threat, and she just goes. <sighs> oh, hell no. And he runs right at her and screams at the top of his lungs, I'm going to take you down, right? And he takes off and just starts sprinting. She's just kind of standing there, and he ran into her with everything he had. And... By the way, great form tackle. Head up, shoulder in. It made that loud slap because they were both shirtless, you know. It was amazing. And he hit her hard and he tried to take her down. And I'm going to tell you something right now. He did not. Uh, uh, it happened exactly the way all of you were picturing it happened. Because <laughs> when his little body hit hers, she just absorbed him for a second, you know. He even disappeared. I was like, hey, where the fuck did he go? And then she just, poof, shot him out of her belly. Just, poof. And he slid on the floor, and my friend ran up to him and was like, that just fucking happened to you! And I turned to her to let her go home. Guys, she starts dancing like this. And I'm like, oh, the night's not over? Okay. She told me later, the night would have been over, but he challenged me. Nobody challenges me. And I was like, oh, shit. So she, she's standing there and she goes, you want to see my finishing move? You want me to finish him? And I was like, Oh, yeah, he does. If I had known the finishing move was on the menu, I'd have ordered that motherfucker at the beginning of the party. Are you kidding? you got a finishing move? Let's see that, right? So she's standing next to him. She goes, finishing move? And we go, yeah. She goes, you want to see that finishing move? And we go, yeah. She goes, finishing move? And we go, yeah. And then she just sat on his head and we went, no. Guys, this dude's head disappeared. All you could see were his tiny arms slapping her back. It was the craziest thing I've ever seen. It was like a reverse birth. It was fucked up. Right? Now, a couple other things. 
So Man. I went into his dad. And by the way, this is when you know you've pulled a good practical joke. Good practical jokes are any jokes that continue to pay dividends for you long after your joke is on. So yeah. I run into yeah. his dad about a month and a half after the party, two weeks before the wedding. And um, he goes to me, he goes, hey, you're not coming to the wedding? I was uninvited to the wedding, by the way. Uh, <laughs> totally worth it. So I would trade a friend today for a story like that. Fuck him. Um, <laughs> I'm going to show you how he uninvited me. This is my favorite part of the story. Oh, I think I remember this. She had just gotten off of him. Oh, he was mad. No. And he stands up and he goes, You're not coming to the wedding! <laughs> <laughs> So if you shut up for a second, I will get to it. Yeah. I know you're annoying me from up here. I can only imagine it what's happening to the people you're sitting next to. But if it was yeah. earlier in the show, I'd address it. But I'm like, well, I'm going to be out of here in 10 minutes. So she'll just annoy those people too. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Oh, man. So here is, this is the nickname. Okay. So he gets up. And, um. He's walking out of the living room to go into the bathroom to hang himself on the sink. <laughs> <laughs> and my friend, I have a friend of mine who was there, and uh, mm. he's one of the darkest, he has one of the darkest sense of humor, which is one of the reasons that I think, you know, he's one of my dear friends. And, um, yeah. but he was sitting there, and I knew he had something up his sleeve, because he, he got a little smile on his face when my buddy was walking up to him. My buddy's walking up to him, and this is the nickname he got. He goes, Damn, man, you look like a glazed donut. <laughs> no. <laughs> and so I wasn't invited to the wedding, but I made all the groomsmen glazed donut t shirts, right? <laughs> And when he was walking down the aisle, they all just gave him a, what's up, right? And then his mom, the week after the wedding, called me and was like, do you have any extra of those cute glazed donut t-shirts? She goes, I love glazed donuts. I'm like, yeah, so does your son. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I got her one for every day of the week. Oh. My buddy called me, he was like, my mom loves that fucking t-shirt, man. Woo, man. But anyways, his dad goes, uh, you're not coming to the wedding? I go, nah. And he said, why not? And I said, oh. <laughs> Tim didn't tell you? <laughs> and he goes, no. Nah. Is there a story? And I go, do you have a couple minutes? Sit down, sit down. <laughs> yeah. Yep, yep. And then his dad used that story as his best man speech. The oh, wife. yeah, I forgot about that. Yeah. yeah you and I say asked that. him, I go, hey, why would you do that to your son? And he goes, Tim shouldn't have been such a pussy. <laughs> oh, that's the end of it, huh? Okay. <clears throat> See? That's how you know you got some real people in your life, man. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Yep, there were uh, a few new details um, that I didn't uh, see in the first one that I did of this, but God damn, man, that is brutal. Woo, okay, well, <laughs> back to it, man. That was Josh Wolf with uh, Best Practical Joke Uncensored. Well, um, <clears throat> I will say this, man, too. I, I always start off by unpacking a little bit, you know, I'll try to keep it short, but, you know, I will... Um, I remember being put through a lot of uh, small time practical jokes as a, as a kid, you know, a uh, young teenager, you know, new adult and all that stuff. But, you know, they were pretty, you know, in good taste, I guess you could say. And um, <clears throat> it usually ended with everybody laughing and like, ah, oh, you got me. Oh, that was crazy. Something like that. But this, whoo, yeah, I probably would have lost a friendship too after that. I don't know. <clears throat> well, 
One thing about me is I think I told you guys this once before in the past, and I do got a story of my own. I'll keep it short. But I said once in a, in a, another reaction that I did, I think it, oh yeah, it was a Leslie Jones one. <clears throat> but I once dated a, uh, a black woman for about maybe um, a little bit. I don't remember exactly how long it was. But uh, she was 6'5", and she was like uh, between 250 and 300 pounds herself. And one thing about me is I'm 6'2", six, I'm six you know, at this point I weigh about 215. And one thing about me, man, is I'm not some clown <clears throat> that's uh, worried about what uh, things look like on the outside, you know what I mean? It's like, if somebody wants to damage their health, that's on them. But if I want to get to know somebody cool, man, I don't care about the exterior. It's just not my thing. But uh, one thing I will say, though, is that if, if my friends ever tried to pull this on me, not only would I would have killed that woman, man, but I would have killed everyone in that room, man. <laughs> you don't you don't put somebody through something like that. It's a funny story, man, but only because it ain't happening to you. You know what I'm saying? But if it was happening to you, oh yeah, man, you'd make sure that you grab like a samurai sword and a shotgun. <laughs> make sure that there was no evidence left for the police to catch you. Man, you know, the let me see if I can point out the things that weren't in the first story. Um I think uh, the finger in the asshole with the buffalo sauce on it. Uh uh, I'm I'm killing that bitch afterwards, man. I ain't go on. I'm like, yeah, but I, I, you know, she was like six something three deep into the threes. He kept saying, I don't give a damn, man. We, 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 business would have been handled that night. Yeah, I'm just saying, man. I'm not uh, little Timmy over here, so don't get it twisted. But um, funny as hell, man. It's just like one thing about me. I'm not a big uh, person who like, you know, plans things and does practical jokes. I'm just not that person, man. If I'm a part of one, hopefully it ends up smoothly so I don't have to kill nobody at the end of the night. But, um, you know, it's just not my thing. But one thing that uh, people in my life who know about, that know me, they know this. If you ask me what my opinion is on something that's either crazy or something very pivotal, important to you, whatever, unless you want a real answer, you know, the realest of the real answers, don't come to me because I'm going to say something that's probably going to hurt your feelings. It's going to start a fight. You know what I mean? Police might get called. You never know because one thing about this mouth, not only does it never close, <clears throat> uh, words never stop coming out in these artistic little ways that I put them together and all that stuff based on experiences, personal opinions and such. It's just like, yeah, that, that that's my thing. Josh Wolf is obviously big on the practical joke thing, you know, because one thing that's funny when uh, when he says this in the story is that how everyone knows the kind of person he is, but they're just like, nah, go ahead. Play. I'm like, nah, in, in fairness, in fairness to Josh Wolf, and this is kind of like a real dick move, but in fairness to Josh Wolf, he did warn his friend. So, you know, my thing is full disclosure. And if you haven't gotten the point, then you deserve everything that's coming to you, you know, and that's just uh, what I feel about it personally. But um, practical jokes, man. It's like, <clears throat> I, I worry about them. I don't know if I said this in the first reaction I did this, but um, one thing about me is practical jokes can go very, very wrong, man. I mean, everyone's intent is to have a good time, but you know, it can go very, very wrong, man. I've seen things like this go very, very wrong. Um, I've seen somebody, um, I've seen somebody um, like uh, break bone. I've seen somebody once uh, break one of their ankles and an arm and had, um, I don't know, um, yeah, the broken collarbone, all in one practical joke. <laughs> I'm not gonna tell that story because I promised I'd never say it, you know what I mean? And, um, and the person that went through this, you know who you are, but I won't say nothing about it. But one practical joke led to three broken bones, man. And it took a while for him to heal up, man, and I'm glad he's doing all right now, but it was not a good day for him, man. And it was all supposed to be in fun and games, you know, until some shit went down. But um, I guess, I guess it works the best if you're around people that you know. But in this case, man, I don't know that if he was really in any real physical danger, you know, you know big bitch and all that shit. But it don't matter, you know. It's supposed to be fun. Everyone was laughing. Like one thing about me, I don't care how embarrassing something is. It doesn't embarrass me. It just means that I gotta get even. You know what I mean? I don't feel any kind of embarrassment or shame like that. You know, at least not in every way. Everyone's got some shame here and there. You know, but um, this was a funny, funny ass story, man. And glazed donut. Oh God, I can only imagine what was going on in that big ass woman's nether regions, man. You know, one thing, and I don't, I don't, I don't believe this is for all big women, but uh, when it comes to big fat women, man, <sighs> smells on the body and crevices and orifices, 
Not always, uh, not always the most pleasant of things to smell. Ugh, my goodness. Yeah, I know, been there, man. I got stories, but I'll save that for another day. But um, <clears throat> nah, man, it was just like you know to have that happen with somebody who did not even come close to seeing it coming, man. Ugh, it is an epic story, man. But it's a blessing in disguise that this didn't end worse than it could have, you know. But this is a very funny story, Josh Wolf, man. You are the man for telling this story, man. And uh, I don't even know like if the, him and his friend Tim ever made up after this, but. Now everyone in the world knows what happened to you at your bachelor party, bro. Uh, hopefully you've gotten past it, you know. And you know what, just before I get out of here, I'm gonna be a little bit mean for a second. Um, don't marry your high school sweethearts, okay? Just don't do that. That, that. That's a ridiculous thing. On so many levels, even if it does have this little cute storybook ending that you think is gonna be the shit or something like that, don't do that. Live life, you know what I mean? I think the settling down age, you know, is um, at minimum, past 25 years old that, that that's just minimum you know i think that's the maximum uh cutoff point for settling down if you haven't figured out you know what it means to be in a relationship by then i think would be 35 you know you got a nice 10 year window uh to make sure that something goes down or it doesn't go down you know but if it happens any time before or past that yeah uh, i don't think that's a that's a solid recipe but then again i'm only speaking for myself on that for all i know some of y'all out there who uh subscribe to your boy here man probably started past your 40s maybe even 50s i don't know and i hope it always works out for you i just go by the statistics you know what i mean and by statistics i mean the ones in my own head <laughs> very funny <laughs> but yeah very funny story from josh wolf man i had a lot of fun getting to this the parts that uh were left out were um, obviously uh, a lot funnier, you know. But to have your mom want the glazed donut t-shirt, man, I'd be like, Mom, you cold as hell for that. That ain't cool, man. I thought you was my mom. I thought you loved me. But you know, it's funny that I mentioned that because my mom, you know, in real life, she probably would have did the same thing, man, because she could be a little treacherous, little... Ooh, okay. Breathe on that one. All right, I'm going to go ahead and uh, cut it off right there. Thank you one more time to Patrick Anderson for suggesting this one to me. Uh, I had fun getting to uh, the original version of it. It kind of threw me off a little bit. It was an awesome story, but the little bits and pieces that he added to the story that he didn't mention in the first one, whoa, yeah, I guess I do get it now why he was that upset. Because in the first one, although it was pretty messed up, you know, uh, the, uh, the original version, it still kind of like would make you feel like there was a friendship to salvage or something like that. But then with these new details, yeah, I can understand why that wouldn't be going on anymore. So uh, thank you, Patrick Anderson, for the great suggestion. And uh, I very much appreciate you, man. And I'm going to go ahead and wrap this one up. Uh, one more time, Josh Wolf with the uh, best practical joke, uncensored. And if you like that reaction, please boom on the like button for me one more time. Uh, subscribe to the channel, ring that bell, and of course, as always, leave a nice comment for your boy. Uh, constructive critiques, leave a nice suggestion or a request. And of course, throw a couple singers at your boy, you know, friendly dialogue, no drama here. And uh, hopefully everybody gets the point, man. I can't emphasize it enough. And I'm going to say it at the end of every video, you know, because some people are still dumb enough to keep trying to start some shit with me, man. I don't get it. But yeah, woosa, breathe, and everything's all good. So yeah, this is going to be Eddie BT be signing off one more again here um another great clip from uh, josh wolf you know it has to do with you know the same story pretty much but the extra details made it much more funnier and uh yeah keep bringing the josh wolf suggestions in the comments man because i definitely want to get to more of him in the future and continue to have a whale of a time you understand what i'm saying so yeah man thank y'all for tuning in uh, one more time man uh, tomorrow's headliner uh wonderful friday and uh i don't know what's going on yet but uh hopefully it's gonna be a good one and we're gonna laugh our asses off so yeah, until next reaction, love and appreciate y'all. Peace.